This is the OTB Network. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses. 16 races to bring you from 10 different racetracks. And kicking it off on Friday afternoon, we had closing day at Calder with the very, very historically early opening for Gulfstream Park. A couple stakes races on Friday. Kicking it off, Christoph Clement sending out Mr. Ryder as the 9-5 to five favorite in the Tropical Park Handicap. And they're off in the Tropical Turf Handicap. Perfect footprint broke alertly. Mobilizer to his inside. Now Chosen Empire is on the move from the extreme outside. Chosen Empire looks like he'll make the lead and do it pretty easily through the first furlong. So Chosen Empire just under a tight hold, and he leads the field by about a length, length and a half. Perfect footprint down to the inside of Silver Medallion, battling second and third, and Stormy Lord is fourth with one lap to go. Mobilizer hugging the hedge, less than five lengths off the lead, and stablemate Hollinger is just alongside of him. Here's Mr. Ryder with Joe Bravo. They're near the back of the pack, saving ground already about eight and a half lengths from the front runners. Grove Hall is second last, and Tanner's can see them all. An easy opening quarter of 24-2 and two over the firm going for Chosen Empire, and Jockey Elvis Trahe. Chosen Empire lets it out a notch and opens it out to about a three-length lead. Silver Medallion running in the second spot. Perfect footprint inside of him. They're followed right now by Stormy Lord. He's a midfield fourth right now and five lengths off the pace. Mobilizer is between runners and Mr. Ryder down along the inside. Then Hollinger, half mile went an easy 49-3 and three for Chosen Empire, who's still under a tight hold from Elvis Trujillo entering the far turn. Chosen Empire's lead is just down to a length now. Silver Medallion medallion inching ever closer from the outside. Here comes Silver Medallion and Javier Castellano outside of Chosen Empire as they come to the top of the stretch. Chosen Empire, Silver Medallion side by side as they straighten away. Hollinger is out after them and Mr. Ryder is cut loose. He's got to get to Silver Medallion. Silver Medallion scoots clear to a two and a half length lead. Mr. Ryder takes up the chase then Hollinger but Silver Medallion's home. Silver Medallion wins the Tropical Turf Handicap. Mr. Ryder's second best, Hollinger, was third. Well, the Tropical Turf handicap goes to Silver Medallion. The second choice, Mr. Ryder, you know, just uh, Silver Medallion got earlier run on Mr. Ryder. Joe Bravo not able to really get that close at all to Silver Medallion. There was a Stewart's inquiry into the straight run, stretch run. There was no action taken. Todd Pletcher sends out. This turf winner, the co-feature on Friday, returning $13.20. This is a son of Badge of Silver. Talked about him many times on the Handicappers Report. He is turning out to be a well above average stallion, middle distance turf. And the closing race on closing day on Friday at Calder was the 37th running of the La Proviante. The favorite was Cheetah at 5-2. And they're off in the La Praviant. And a good start for Cheetah. Casablanca smile eager out of the gate, and she'll go right out to take over the lead. Petite Riviere settles down in third, just outside Holidays at the farm. And Tesoro de Amor now moves into the fourth spot. She's in the clear and on hold about four and a half lengths from the lead. Then Coffee Run just outside of Sonata, who's in between runners as they go to the first of three turns. Millennia's bottled up and under a tight hold right now. She's down at the inside and about seven lengths off the pace. Emerald Beach is just just alongside of her, then this little soul of mine and Benthania is going to have to pass them all as they move for the home stretch for the first time around. Casablanca Smile and Javier Castellano uncontested through the first half mile. They're let loose on the front end, and Casablanca Smile off this long layoff is eager and going well within herself. She's about two lengths in front of Cheetah, who's a clear second at this point. These two have pulled well clear of the others. Petite Riviere is on hold in third and about six lengths off the lead. The opening quarter was 25 and 1 and the half 51 and 3. So just a leisurely pace being set by Casablanca Smile 
as she takes him to the clubhouse turn. Casablanca smile just over a length right now. Cheetah just closing the ranks a little bit. Now Petit Riviere and Tesoro de Amor getting closer from third and fourth as they go around the club turn. Sonata runs along in the fifth spot. She's now seven lengths off the lead, and that six furlong time was a very easy 118 flat. So really just a walk in the park thus far for the top two. Casablanca smile and Cheetah as they lead this classy field of fillies and mares onto the back stretch. Casablanca smile still untested on the lead. She leads it about a length and a half. Cheetah there in the second spot. Now they're closing ranks behind these two. Emerald Beach is the first one starting to close in. She's moved all the way up into third and she's in the clear and trying to chase down the top two as they move to the far turn. Petit Riviere still down there on the inside. Tesoro de Moore is in between runners right now. Benthany is out of last and trying to close in. So is this little soul of mine. But Casablanca Smile and Cheetah have plenty left after those slow early fractions. Casablanca Smile set loose for the drive as she straightens away. It's Casablanca Smile. She kicks clear to lead at two and a half lengths. Cheetah all out under Rajiv Mirage. Not bridging the gap right now. Then this little soul of mine to Soro de Amor. But nobody's gaining on Casablanca Smile. Casablanca Smile wired a wire in the La Praviante. Cheetah second best all the way around. Then to Soro de Amor. And this little soul of mine. The Chilean bred beat the Great Britain bred. The favorites run in reverse order. They run one, two around the racetrack. Casablanca Smile coming off a January 2nd layoff. That race, runner-up in the La Provence. This time, making every pole a winning one under J.J. Castellano. Cheetah not able to make uh, any dent in that position as the 5-2 to two favorite finishes second. You heard Bobby Newman talking about the internal fractions. 51-3, and 118.01, and uh, naturally came home in 23-1 and one for Casablanca. Uh, smile, so Cheetah probably would have had to go on about 22 and change. Not going to happen. And then Tesoro Diamore, who was third and fourth around the entire racetrack. So not much change in that trifecta going 12 furlong. Shug McGahey, we've been pointing it out for the last eight or nine months, how brilliant, brilliant McGahey's horses have been running on the turf. Friday was closing day at Calder. Saturday, December 3rd, a historically early Opening day for Gulfstream Park. Ancient Rome for Anthony Dutro, the six to five favorite in the spectacular bid. They're racing in the spectacular bid. Town Prize on the far outside with a sharp start. Vexer came out running in second. Ancient Rome is away third to the outside and four Obi is fourth. Then it's back to Jordan's Image and Rex's last tour and they're six lengths off the lead as Town Prize takes them to the half mile pole in front. Vexer and Ancient Rome are right behind second and third. That first quarter was in 22 and two. After that comes four Obi in fourth. Now four lengths off the lead. Jordan's Image and Rex's last tour the back around the far turn it's been town prize so far ancient rome is a length behind in second four obi has taken third and vexer has retreated to fourth vexer put to the whip not keeping up today as they come to the top of the stretch a 44 and three half mile for town prize who comes to the eighth pole clear from ancient rome four obi is third in the outside down to the 16th pole town prize trying to keep the lead four obi and ancient Ancient Rome now go by for Obi and Ancient Rome. These two down to the wire, noses apart. Maybe Ancient Rome in a photo with four Obi in the spectacular bid. Then Town Prize and Jordan's image. And you saw the run out is still, you know, the only point, the most important point. Joe Rocco Jr. got Ancient Rome in between horses. The familiar silks of Michael Dubb. To the finish line first as the six to five favorite. Moore Obi, who ran very well at nearly 12 to one, finishes second. Town Prize, who was the early leader, finishes third. And Vexor, who we saw in New York win the National, run poorly in the Breeders' Cup as the three to two second choice, doesn't beat a horse in Saturday's spectacular bid. So Ancient Rome just breaks the maiden, now beats winners in the spectacular bid. On Sunday, the Florida Breds were going to run in the sun, ran in the Sunshine State Stakes. 
Terry Pompey sending out the two to one favorite, zero rate policy. They're racing in the Sunshine State. And it's Our Edge who's sent out to the front. Pashito the Che is away second to the inside. And then it's Black Diamond Cat in zero rate policy in fourth. Behind them comes Chiseled Light in fifth, five lengths off the lead. Then it's It's Never Too Late, close it out on the inside. Two experience in Manicero at the back. Our Edge takes them up the back stretch in front, ran a 22 and one opening quarter and leads by almost two. Pashito the Che on the inside. Between horses, Black Diamond Cat. Zero rate policy moving up on the far outside. And then it's three lengths more. Back to Chiseled Light. And then close it out along the rail. It's never too late. And Manicero are next. And to experience is the trailer as they round the far turn. 44 and three the half. Our edge a half length in front. Zero rate policy second to the outside. Pashito the Che is pushed on for more speed. Then it's Black Diamond Cat. It's never too late. Is coming three wide. They're into the stretch. And it's our edge to catch. Zero rate policy comes up after him now. Zero rate policy and our edge a furlong to go. Zero rate policy takes the lead. Our edge is back into second. Then it's never too late. Money Cerro is closing with a rush on the far outside. Here's the wire. Zero rate policy won it. Money Cerro came late for second. It's never too late was third and our edge was fourth. And Paco Lopez gets the money on the favorite locally owned by Claire Bridge Stable and Bill Lawrence, Terry Pompey's runner. In eight previous starts, zero rate policy had run exclusively at six furlongs. Well, the extra furlong proved to be well within the scope of zero rate policy, who returns $6.40. We'll see where uh, this son of Trippy ends up next, but I would say... Sprinting will be the domain. Saturday, December 3rd was also opening day in the state of Florida. Tampa Bay Downs got their winter spring racing season underway. And Jason Service was sending out the 5-2 favorite. Jenny so great in the lightning stakes. And they're off. Suzona broke alertly and heads out for the lead. Charlie Papa, the far side. My sunshine gal bounding by is right there. And in between runners, well deserved. All oh, fighting for that early lead. Don't talk to me is in the mix as well. Pyrite Storm is only two and a half off the pace. Suzona's dropped back just a bit. She's outside outpost now with three and a half to make up. Here's Jenny So Great. She's got six lengths to make up as they move to the far turn. Supreme is second last. No speed from Legally Blanca. She's last of the 11 as they move around to the final quarter mile. Don't talk to me, ranging up outside. Well-deserved. These two are nose-to-nose -nose as they come to the top of the lane. Bounding by is just in behind those two. Suzona's fourth right now. She's still got five lengths to make up. Well-deserved just in front. Don't talk to me, trying to push on by. Bounding by. Jenny so great is weaving her way through. Suzona and Supreme closing down the grandstand side. Jenny so great now hits the front. Supreme late on the scene. Jenny so great. Jenny so great wins the lightning season. City, tight for place and show, maybe supreme there on the outside. Well, the first and third choice run one, two, coming from well off the pace. Jenny So Great was ninth early, Supreme was tenth under Lu Luis Garcia. But Jason Service, runner coming out of the grade one in the Arctic, scores the nice favorite victory, returning seven dollars and eighty cents in Saturday's Lightning City Stakes opening day at Tampa Bay Downs. Going off to the fairgrounds, we had the Claiming Crown Jewel Stakes. And in this race, Michael Maker, who has had a tremendous autumn, sends out a 9-10 to 10 favorite entry. Jewel. Vero. Even start. Isthmus broke well between horses Rain King. It happened again to Tibona Gente. Al Mutasib is running second to last. And Harmonizer trails early on. And it's Isthmus who leads them to the first turn. Isthmus in front of Rain King. Tutti Bona Gente is partnered with It Happened Again. Then we come back to El Mutasib. And Harmonizer takes up position in the backfield. Now as they move through the opening turn. The first quarter covered in 23 and 4 fifths seconds. It's Isthmus in front. So Isthmus leads Rain King by a length and a half. That same margin to Tutti Bona Gente. Third and under keen restraint. It Happened Again running fourth by a length and a half. 
and a settled Al Mutasim, and still quite a separation back there to Harmonizer in sixth. They head to the half mile pole in the claiming crown jewel. A half mile for Isthmus, 47 and one fifth seconds. Isthmus in front. Isthmus and Rain King, the two, now four furlongs from home. Tutte Bona Gente third. It happened again. El Mutasib is 10 lengths from his leading partner now as they move through the turn. And Harmonizer still has 20 lengths to find and three furlongs to do so. Isthmus it is. Isthmus still being tracked by Rain King through the turn. It happened again. Now being ridden to challenge. Al Mutasib rallies on the outside as they come toward the quarter pole. Harmonizer leads only Tutte Bona Gente into the stretch. Isthmus, this longtime leader, getting those stern left-handers from Rosie Napravnik. Al Mutasib charging on the outside. It happened again, splits foes. Then Rain King, Harmonizer on the far outside. They're deep in the final furlong. Esmus hanging on by a thread. Here comes It Happened Again for Shane Sellers. It Happened Again. The jewel goes to It Happened Again from Esmus. El Mutasib third. And Harmonizer finish fourth. It Happened Again off the June 25th layoff under Shane Sellers makes the late move to run down Isthmus, who was trying to make every pole a winning one. The entry runs second and third, first time that they had run at fairgrounds. It happened again, though. The son of Proud Citizen returned $7.40 as the second choice for Steve Aspusen and owner Maggie Moss. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have racing from Turfway Park, Woodbine, Zia Park, and Golden Gate. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, a time where uh, Kentucky racing shifts through the winter, or very, very early part of spring at Turfway Park on the poly track. And one, ve one venue that nearly everyone in the nation agreed uh, definitely needed a poly track surface with their cold nights of racing and the winter weather. Well, Saturday night, Michael Trambetta sent out Vanishing Gray as the 5-2 to two favorite in the holiday inaugural stake. And they're off. whack a broke sharply. So did Five Star Fun. Those two right together. Fortune play up on the outside. Helen Bellen from the rail. Also up from the inside, Miss Dora. Down the back stretch. whack a with the head in front of Five Star Fun. Down along the inside, Helen Bellen runs third. Fortune play fourth ahead. Vanishing Gray right up there in fifth. Miss Dora drops back in a sixth. Hyperlink up on the outside now seventh. Three lengths back to dances with Ashley, followed by Leopard Rock. The trailers are Seeking Sheba and Lady Primal. The quarter in 22 flat. Midway through the turn, whack -a Fortune play is gaining from the outside. Five-star fun has dropped back in third. Hyperlink moves up and takes fourth. 
On the inside, that's still Helen Bell in center of the track. Miss Dora with a furlong to run. whack -a -ma and Fortune Play on the outside, but whack -a -ma still has the lead with Fortune Play. Hyperlink is next. It's whack -a -ma and Fortune Play again up on the outside. That's a photo. Maybe Fortune Play with that last surge over whack -a -ma. We'll take a photo and another photo for third. Well, a terrific race, 9.30 at night, and good uh, job by Mike Battaglia, who picked up Fortune Play early. They were ding-dong back and forth in the stretch. Of course, for race watchers, the only misfortune was we had the Santa Claus of the 12 and the 4, which can be very similar. We have yellow and lime, but on the outside, Ramon Vasquez makes the, uh, you know, the last big, better push to score the $18.20 upset. whack -a finishes second as the second choice. And Hyperlink did finish third. Vanishing Gray, well beaten on Saturday night, checks in eighth. Up, we're going to go north of uh, the, the border, that is. And Mark Frostad sending out Eye of the Leopard by a few shekels, the two-to-one favorite in the Val Dictory Stakes. They're off in the valedictory stakes and get a rhythm stumbled at the break. Recovered quickly, though, and in fact comes on and takes the lead. And it's get a rhythm in front early. Harrods Creek settles into stride in second, and Eye of the Leopard is third, three and a half lengths off the lead in the early going. Then Alphabet or Eagle Poise, and the Gray of Fleet again trails early. And it's get a rhythm, leading it by a length and a half. Harrods Creek is second. 24 and 4 for that opening quarter mile. Alpha Better comes on to the inside third. Then Eye of the Leopard in fourth position. Eagle Poise have taken in hand in fifth. And a fleet again is at the back of the pack, six lengths off of this pace setter. And that pace setter is Get a Rhythm, who's opened up three lengths. And it's Get a Rhythm as they come over to the head of the stretch. Get a Rhythms in the front by three lengths. Harrods Creek, then Eye of the Leopard. They ran a half in 49 and four, and they move in front of us for the first time, and it's Get a Rhythm being nursed on a lead of just a length and a half now. Harrods Creek and Chantel Sutherland inch ever closer. Eye of the Leopard keeping the first two in his sights. Then we have Eagle Poise and Alpha Better. A fleet again still trails this field as they have seven furlongs to go in the valedictory stakes. And they're running through the turn now. Get a rhythm. Just a length and a half. Harrods Creek continues to hound just off the flank of get a rhythm with six furlongs to go. Eye of the Leopard has let the first two get away on him. On the outside, Eagle Poise is in a fourth position. Alpha Better is fifth. They ran a mile in 41 and three. Get a rhythm, the longest shot on the board, 35 to one and in front with just under five furlongs to go. Harrods Creek targets get a rhythm up the backstretch. Then there's about five to Eye of the Leopard, who's patiently handled by Luis Contreras to the outside as Eagle Poise, the Breeders' Cup Marathon winner. A fleet again has passed one, that being Alpha Better, as they head into the turn, and Harrods Creek made his move and ran by get a rhythm. And it's Harrods Creek. Now I have the Leopard. is called on for run midpoint of the turn. And Eagle Poise is coming fast as well. And they're after Harrods Creek of the quarter pole. I have the Leopard between horses. Eagle Poise is on the extreme outside. Doesn't appear to be a fleet against day. And they turn into the stretch in the valedictory. Here comes Eagle Poise to take on Harrods Creek. I have the Leopards in tight there. Harrods Creek digs down deep trying to fend off Eagle Poise. What a finish. Eagle Poise pokes his nose in front. Eagle Poise won the valedictory. The Harrods Creek, Eye of the Leopard third, and a fleet again fourth. 14 furlongs, ladies and gentlemen, and a new track record. I would suspect they don't run this distance very often, but a mile and three quarters in grade three company. 
the betting in this race, the, there was no super factor wagering, but the odds in order were three to one, seven to two, the favorite at two to one, and then a fleet again who uh, was basically the co-favorite at two to one coming off his Breeders' Cup victory as Dan Loisel helps us out at the top of the stretch when a fleet again is 12 lengths out of third place. He lets us know that it's not a fleet again's day. Thanks, Dan. But Eagle Poise coming out of a 13 furlong race, prepping very nicely for the valedictory scores. The victory turning $8.80. This son of Empire Maker trained by Graham Motion. And in eight starts at Woodbine now, the winner is five victories, two second place finishes, and one off the board. Now time to go to Hobbs, New Mexico for a couple of stakes races for you. Awesome bet, the 4-5 to five favorite in the Zia Park Derby. And they're racing in the Zia Park Derby. First strike was smartly away out of the gate with Hidden Recipe. Going up with the leaders is 31st Street, followed by Happy Toes in fourth. Then comes Awesome Bet and Half Dome Dude is the early trailer. Six and a quarter lengths cover the field and they're going at a married man's gallop as they turn away from the grandstand. 31st Street leads them through the opening quarter of a mile. By our necks, a first strike in second place. Hidden Recipe on the inside in third, right ankle berry just being being passed by Happy Toes. Then there's a camp of two and a half lengths to Awesome Bet and Half Dome Dude at the tail end of the field. Five and a half furlongs to go. 31st Street controls the tempo and Medigan looks over his shoulder. He sees first strike almost alongside in second. They're four clear of Happy Toes in third. Hidden Recipe then in fourth and the final two. Awesome Bet Quinones quite content to bide his time and Half Dome Dude is last of all. Nine lengths cover the field and the tempo is definitely on the upbeat. They head down towards the point, three furlongs from the finish. 31st Street having to be bustled along. First strike almost at the throat latch now, but they're six clear of Happy Toes. Then comes Hidden Recipe. Awesome Bet has got a lot to do, but look at him going. He's beginning to hit full stride. However, he's going to have to come around horses and Half Dome Dude is making headway as well. They turn for home. A furlong and a half to go in the Zia Park Derby and first strike strikes for home. It's gone too clear. In second place, 31st Street is under the whip and is trying gallantly to battle back. They're well clear of Half Dome Dude. Then comes Happy Toes inside the final 16 for a mile. It's first strike and Alfredo Juarez Jr. who take the Zia Park Derby. 31st Street in second. They were a long way clear of Half Dome Dude third. Happy Toes. Then came Awesome Bet. A and there is First Strike scoring a $14.40 convincing victory. First off, a $40,000 claim, so kudos for those, uh, those connections. An awesome bet coming out of the Oklahoma Derby, only beat one horse at 4 to 5. And I mention this often, that shippers you know, seem to get overbooked in, in, bet. in New York. We love the California shippers in California. They love the shippers. Well, awesome bet was five to two on the morning line coming out of the Oklahoma Derby bet down to four to five and really did little to no running, only beating hidden recipe to the line. Sunday afternoon, another stakes race from Zia Park and the betting five to two favorite Imco Spirit in the Zia Park distance championship at a mile and an eighth. And away they go in the Zia Park Distance Championship Handicap. Red Laird up with the early lead together with Imco Spirit and Mato Mondo in the yellow cap. Wide on the track is McKenna's Justice as they come up by the grandstand for the first time. Followed by Skipper Smile. Then comes Ramoose, followed by Spurrier, who's quite content to bide his time towards the tail of the field. And Infinite Resources last. Seven eighths of a mile to go as they turn away from the grandstand. And a lackadaisical pace being set. On the front end, Imco Spirit has taken over from Red Laird in second. Mato Mondo, Medellin just having a problem or two controlling that one. Then comes McKenna 
Does Justice on the outside in four, followed by Skip a Smile within two and a half lengths of the leader. That one also pulling a little bit hard. Then comes Spurrier, and the tempo has closed right down now. And the final two are Vamoose and Infinite Resources, last of all, but only five and a half lengths off the pace. They come down towards a point half a mile from the finish. Red Lead has regained the lead from Inco Spirit in second. But Matto Mondo is right there on the outside in third. Just getting squeezed up there was Skip a Smile as Vamoose makes headway in between the leaders. Then on the outside comes McKenna's Justice. Skip a Smile is after these. And then comes Spurrier who's going to have to get moving. And last of all is Infinite Resource. A quarter of a mile to go. They begin to turn into the home straight. Red Lead about to be swallowed up by Vamoose in the blue cap. And Enrique Gomez is hard at work. But Red Lead has more. And now Ryan Eichelberry pulls the stick out. Three wide. McKenna's Justice is making a late move. Then after these, skip a smile who has racing room, but it's left it too late. Inside the final 16, red led the leader. McKenna's Justice on the near side. McKenna's Justice! to win the Zia Park Distance Championship from red led second, Vermoose third, and Spurrier fourth. The second longest shot on the board, ladies and gentlemen, this field of eight, six horses were nine to one or lower. The long shots run first and last, but McKenna's Justice scores the nose victory, returning $36.60. This son of Medallia Dioro, I was teasing as the intro of the race. The distance championship at a mile and eight, they should call Woodbine up to run a mile and three quarters, but Justin Evans sends out the winner in front of a reported 782 people in Hobbs, New Mexico on Sunday. And I think that makes uh, Zia Park the first official, uh, the first track to officially have snow on the infield for this winter season. Now time to go to Northern California. Golden Gate Fields, ladies and gentlemen. My Gigi, the even money favorite in the Corta Madero. My Gigi, gate two, racing. My Gigi is off okay. Lady of 50 gets the best of the start. Power of Nine are showing some dash. Run the Blues away up on the inside is pretty handy. Hennessy River down the outside is going to be caught wide and will be off the pace at this longer trip. And over on the inside, Run the Blues away now drifting back to the rear. Sweet Nothings is going through about midfield, one off the rail. Lady of 50 got away with a very easy lead through the first quarter mile. She has it narrowly from Hennessy River going onto the back stretch and Sweet Nothings cuts through the pack to third. My Gigi the inside running fourth from Power of Nine who's three wide, four lengths off the lead and run the Blues away a couple of lengths last of all. Hennessy River now moves up to join Lady of 50 and they share the lead by two lengths to Sweet Nothings. So the three Hollendorfer fillies are the first three to pass the half-mile pole. The favourite, my Gigi, camped fourth on the rail. She's followed by power of nine and three lengths to run the Blues away. It's Lady of 50 by a head from Hennessy River. Just over a length to power of nine, who's being uh, given her head by Sadio. Three wide. She takes third position around the far turn. Sweet nothing's caught between runners. My Gigi bailed away on the fence. And run the Blues away, tacks onto the bulk of the field. Three lengths only covering the field at the top of the stretch. With Lady of 50, Hennessy River together by a length to power of nine. Sweet nothings in the Burgundy Cap is coming home well. My GG's dropped out to the tail. Run the Blues away, tries to mount a challenge out very wide. But Lady of 50 kicks on strongly. She has the lead from Sweet Nothings and Hennessy River. And it's going to be Lady of 50 with that man, Krieger, reeling off his fourth consecutive stakes victory. Sweet Nothings is second, Hennessy River third. Hollendorfer with the trifecta. Then run the Blues away, power of nine, and my... Yes, yeah, the Jerry Hollendorfer trifecta, $249.40. One, two, three, he wins 92% of the $75,000 purse. My GG doesn't beat a single horse under Frank Alvarado, ch checking in last at even money. But Kevin Krieger gets the second choice of the Hollander runners. Hollendorfer runners, excuse me, third choice overall. Lady of 50 making every poll a winning one on Saturday at Golden Gate. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, racing from Hollywood Park and the Big A. Please stay tuned.
And welcome back to Horses and Courses. Now time to go out to Hollywood Park. A couple of two-turn events on the poly track named after horses of enormous Southern California lore and one of them by a COA national, national worldwide lore. But Native Diver, who won three consecutive Hollywood Gold Cups in the late uh, 60s, gives us a late season older horse. Heck, the first time I remember gentlemen running on dirt in the United States, it was in the Native Diver. And... Uh, Trey Barachos was the 8-5 to five favorite in Saturday's renewal of the Navy Diver Handicap. They're up. Tweepster has asked for speed and goes for the front. Trace Barachos away second, and these two set off. They'll be one too early, and they are going a good clip. Trace Barachos going to take it to Tweepster early, and Trace Barachos is going to make the lead. Masoni and Kettle Corn are next. Then comes El Defer. Summer Movie is second to last, and the trailer is Rescue Squad, and Trace Barachos sets the pace. Tweebster wanted the lead, but he has to concede and sit second as they turn into the backstretch. Trace Barachos, the leader, a length and a half. Tweebster will do his running from second. Those two are three and a half clear of Masoni and Kettle Corn, third and fourth and about five from the front. Eastern Invader. Rescue Squad races in fifth. He's got six lengths to make up. Breeders' Cup champion El Defer is second to last and seven off the lead. And Summer Movie will do his running from the back of the pack. Eight lengths from first to last. A half mile to run in the 33rd Native Diver Handicap. Trace Barachos, the one to catch. He goes into the far turn, a length and a half in front of Tweebster, who is now asked to go after the front running favorite. Trace Barachos leads by a length and a quarter. Tweebster is second. Two and a half lengths to Masoni, who's on the move after the front runners. Then comes Kettle Corn. He stays at the rail, still has a good chance for Gomo. Go, go, Kettle Corn. Two and a half. Now less than that from the front, and he's moving up. Then comes El Defer, Rescue Squad and Summer Movie. Trace Barachos leads. He's got a threesome coming after him. Kettle Corn tries to squeeze through a tight spot at the rail, and Rosario's making it very tight for Gomez, but Kettle Corn's up in there. Meanwhile, Masoni and Tweepster still there. Kettle Corn at the rail. Tweepster, Trace Barachos, Kettle Corn. The 33rd Native Diver Handicap goes to Kettle Corn. He beat Trace Barachos by a head. Tweepster third and Masoni fourth. And kudos to, to the exacta riding jockeys. On Trace Barachos, Joel, Joel Rosario, the 8-5 to five favorite, didn't make it easy for Garrett Gomez, and Garrett Gomez didn't shy from the inside with Kettle Corn to upset the native diver returning $19. The two favorites run second and third after chasing each other early in the race, but nice to see high-quality race riding by Joel Rosario, top-flight jockey in Southern California. But the offspring of Kettle Corn scores the upset half-length victory for John Sadler and his uh, big client, CRK Stable. And John Sadler, the last 18 to 24 months, has had a tremendous, tremendous run. Sunday afternoon, renamed a couple of years ago after the magnificent Hall of Famer Bayakoa, the 8-5 to five favorite City to City. They're up. Champagne Doro broke a stride slow. Ella Fitz broke beautifully to the front. Miss Mittagong and a recovering Champagne Doro. Bobble Queen will be four wide. Washington Bridge just in behind the leader. City to City has to take back to save some ground. She's alongside. Love the way you are as they turn into the backstretch, and the leader is Ella Fitz. Ella Fitz is a length and a half in front of Champagne Doro, a similar margin to Miss Mittagong and Bobble Queen, together third and fourth and three off the lead. Defending champion Washington Bridge is a tugging fifth for Joe Talamo. She's sharp in fifth and about four from the front, two in front of stablemate City to City and Garrett Gomez. The trailer is love the way you are. Ten lengths first to last, up the backstretch in the 30th by a Koa handicap, and the leader is Ella Fitz. She smoothly goes past the half-mile pole with a two-length lead over Champagne Doro, who's pushed along just a bit to maintain her second position. Bobble Queen and Miss Mittagong still together and still third and fourth, three and a half from the front. Washington Bridge has five to come. City to City is seven lengths behind. Love the way you are, has trailed throughout. 
Less than three furlongs left to run, and Ella Fitz is still there. Ella Fitz to the top of the stretch. A two-length lead over now an all-in Champagne Doro. Bobble Queen comes three wide. Then comes Miss Mittagong at the rail. Washington Bridge and City to City both have a lot of work to do, and Ella Fitz comes to the final furlong, and she's running them right off their feet. Ella Fitz has a big lead now. Final 16th, three and a half in front of Miss Mittagong in second. Bobble Queen and City to City. Ella Fitz going to take them wire to wire in the Bayakoa. A dominating win in the 30th by Akoa. Ella Fitz won by three and three quarters. Miss Mittagong was second, and Bobble Queen finished third. Boy, Martine Garcia's front-end winner. Looks like she wants to go another eighth of a mile for Bob Baffert. But this daughter of Tis Now scores the easy convincing $11.80 victory over Miss Mittagon. Bauble Queen finishes third. City to City, the 8-5 to five favorite, finishes fifth. Washington Bridge, last year's winner, beats one horse. That one horse, Champagne Dioro, who two summers ago won the test stakes at Saratoga. I believe she's winless since then. She, I know one thing. In many appearances, she's run from not good to terrible and just backed up and stopped running the last eighth of a mile. But Bob Baffert wins Sunday's Bayakoa with Ella Fitz. A couple of races to bring you from the Big A. Up first, we're going to have the Garland of Roses, CeCe's pal, the even money favorite. And they're off. Isn't she grand? Off to an alert start. Off in a tangle of faff. Up the back stretch, isn't she grand? Clears the field. Sick of Maya Mio, second on the outside of CeCe's Pal. Now back at the rail, third. Miss Venenza is fourth in a break of five. Back to a faff. Up the back stretch, isn't she grand? Breezing along in front here. Clear by two, 23 and four was the opening quarter mile. Sink of Maya Mio just outside of CeCe's Pal. Locked in the rail for the moment. Another three lengths back. Miss Venenza is asked for run, but she's still about six lengths behind and not getting closer. Another five back to a faff as they come to the top of the stretch. Isn't she grand? Off the turn by two. CeCe's pal to the attack at the top of the stretch. Three sixteenths out. Isn't she grand to catch? CeCe's pal trying to catch her. She's a length and a half behind. Inside the final furlong. Isn't she grand? Fully extended. CeCe's pal going to mow her down. CeCe's pal got the lead 70 yards out, one going away by two. Isn't she grand? Second, Cinco de Miami, a third. And the even money favorite scores by two plus lengths for Richard Dutro and one of his newer clients, Eric Fine, who we've seen his silks around New York for a couple of years. And uh, Mr. Fine has to be very, very pleased with uh, his new trainer, Richard Dutro. Not so new. Uh, over these last couple of months. But the 26th running of the Garland of Roses, a, a, you know, a, a tour de force nearly for CeCe's pal who scores the easy $4.10 victory. Up next, we're going to have the vodka stakes. And in here, 8 to 5 band box, the favorite. The 8 to 5 non favorite, Bruce Brown sends out Dr. Disco. And they're off. Pretty Boy Freud. Dr. Disco comes up the inside. Dahlgren Chapel on the outside. Uncle T7's come out running in fourth. Then we 40 in band box and law enforcement at the back. It's Dr. Disco. Out there by a length. Pretty Boy Freud on the chase second. His mate, Uncle T7, down on the inside. Band box in a little tight at the rail. Band box had to check. We Freudians in between horses. Dahlgren Chapel in the clear on the far outside. Just two and a half in the lead. Farther back is the trailer. Law enforcement, 23 and three, the opening quarter mile here by Dr. Disco. On the hard chase is Pretty Boy Freud. Here's Dahlgren Chapel now, making a move just outside the quarter pole. Uncle T7 down at the fence. Then we Freudian and law enforcement and band box. Top of the stretch, Dr. Disco. Pretty Boy Freud driving to him. One furlong to go, Uncle T7 down toward the inside. On the far outside, late run law enforcement down to the final 100 yards. Dr. Disco, law enforcement coming with a flying finish, but it'll be Dr. Disco did a front running dance here to win it by a length. 
over law enforcement and Pretty Boy Freud. Mike Luzzi making every poll a winning one on the barely second choice, Dr. Disco, who's the son of Dr. Margaret, and she's the daughter of Dr. Blum. Of course, Dr. Disco, a son of Disco Rico. Uh, very nice victory, beating the nearly 15 to 1 shot, long, second to longest shot on the board, Law Enforcement, and Pretty Boy Floyd finishes second as part of the 3 to 1 entry, but Bruce Brown gets the winner of the vodka steaks. And wrapping up this week's show, we're going to have Richard Dutrow sending out the 8-5 to five favorite Swag Daddy in the New York bread, Damon Runyon. And they're off. Think I'm hooked. Comes out in stride quickly to the front. Pretension comes on through between horses. Mississippi duel there. Three wide. Four wide. It's live for today. And then behind them, it's Disco on. In between horses, tug of war. Coalition right there in the thick of it. A very tight pack. Early on here, Swag Daddy is last, but he's only four lengths from the lead. So this compact field makes their way into the back stretch run with Think I'm Hooked being prompted by pretension. In behind, Disco on. Disco on's got room to run through in between horses, and he's very keen to do it and comes on through. So Disco on takes the lead, despite some restraint there by Carlos Montalvo. Right back at him on the inside is Think I'm Hooked. And then Pretension right up and on the pace and running along in third. Mississippi Duel is fourth. Tug of War, then Coalition in between horses. In the clear on the outside is Live for Today. Swag Daddy the trailer. Now six from the front. The field moves into the far turn. Easy fraction, still a tight pack. And it's Disco on, resting a narrow lead from Think I'm Hooked. Pretension right there, three wide. Mississippi Duel now all out. Live for today and behind horses and now running in fifth. Coalition is tailed off in the sixth and tug of war. Swag Daddy, it's still wide open. Top of the stretch. And it is Pretension going head-to-head -head with Disco on. Swag Daddy. Swag Daddy rallies on the outside. Final 16th. Disco on. Disco on a desperate long shot. Pretension is there. Swag Daddy's still coming. Pretension comes away with the lead. Can Swag Daddy get him? Maybe. Swag Daddy and Pretension. Disco on third and live for today. From last to just first as the eight to five favorite, the very familiar silks we saw him on Saturday. Eric Fine, Richard Dutro Jr. and Junior Alvarado. They win on both days of the week, and I don't think this will be the final time we will see Junior Alvarado through the winter on horses and courses winning a stakes race. But Swag Daddy, and if you watch the racing on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in New York on the inner dirt track, uh, a last to first finish running down early runners in the race, returning $5.50 to Swag Daddy's backers in Sunday's Damon Runyon. That wraps up this week's edition of Horses and Courses, ladies and gentlemen. We invite you to join us on Monday morning for the next Horses and Courses.